Hello, welcome to a demo of semantic web isolation. Each day, millions of new websites are born. Some have a valid business purpose, but many are tools developed by cybercriminals to deliver malware. To detect malware and phishing threats, web gateways employ various approaches, including URL filtering and risk level assessment, to identify known good and bad domains. However, they are challenged to analyze and categorize new websites and sites that have no reputational information. To protect their enterprise from potentially malicious sites while avoiding overblocking web access, IT security teams can leverage web isolation. In this video, you will see how the power of web isolation helps protect employees from malware and phishing threats often delivered by uncategorized and risky websites. We'll start the demo by browsing without web isolation. First, let's navigate to a well-known website, the Wall Street Journal, using the Chrome browser. If we view the source code of this page, we can see this page is comprised of hundreds of lines of code, which are executed and rendered by the browser. This code includes many different elements, such as HTML, JavaScript, CSS files, Java, and Flash. This is the attack surface used by attackers to exploit browser vulnerabilities and infect endpoints. Now, let's see how semantic web isolation works. For demo purposes, let's change our proxy settings to use semantic web isolation. In real life, web isolation integrates with semantic secure web gateways, as well as other existing proxies, gateways, or firewalls, does not require any endpoint installation or modification, and delivers a seamless user experience that is transparent to the user. When reloading the page, we see that the website looks exactly the same, and scrolling, mouse over, and other user actions behave in the exact same way as before. However, when we view the Wall Street Journal source page again, we see that the source code looks very different. These blocks are configuration headers and contain no active content. The only active content is the semantic web isolation single JavaScript line that prevents all web threats from reaching employee devices. Let's also take a look at gmail.com. Again, if we examine the page source, we only see one line of code, but the entire user experience is preserved. For example, we can scroll and zoom, all without impacting the user experience. When we compose a new email, we can see that type, copy, and paste text are supported, and everything works the same way as if you were browsing directly to Gmail. It's possible to define policies to disable these functions for specific sites or users. Gmail, Google Docs, Office 365, and many other popular sites have a custom right-click menu to provide additional functionality. Semantic Web Isolation fully supports these custom menus. For instance, if I make a spelling mistake, Gmail underlines it. When I right-click on the word, we can see Gmail's spelling suggestion and select the correct spelling. Next, we'll see how web isolation enables safe access to documents such as PDFs and Microsoft Office files. Instead of downloading documents to the endpoint and opening them in applications such as Excel or Adobe Reader, which could have vulnerabilities, web isolation renders documents remotely to enable safe viewing through the browser. When we click on a document link in an email to open an Excel file, it opens remotely in the semantic web isolation environment instead of being downloaded. We can see that the document is rendered correctly. If we examine the source code of the document page, we see only one line of code. Semantic web isolation also supports advanced document functionality, such as filtering and sorting, which allows users to interact with document content. You can also configure web isolation to enable specific user groups to download documents. Before a file is downloaded, web isolation can send it to semantic content and malware analysis, or integrate with other sandbox antivirus engines or sanitization engines which remove exploitable content from files. In this example, we see that the file is infected. Therefore, web isolation blocks the malicious file from being downloaded. If a file is password protected, Web isolation can prompt the user to enter the password. This enables sending even encrypted files to be scanned or sandboxed before they are downloaded. By rendering all documents remotely, web isolation prevents infections even from malicious files downloaded through the browser. In addition to eliminating malware infections, 
Web isolation also prevents phishing threats and credential theft. In this example, the user receives a legitimate looking email with a link. Clicking on the link takes us to what seems to be a legitimate Office 365 login page. But if we look carefully at the address, we can see that it's actually a fake Office 365 page. We can define policies driven, for instance, by risk level or category, so that semantic web isolation renders certain pages in read-only mode, thereby blocking users from submitting their credentials into phishing sites. As we have demonstrated, web isolation protects users from malware and phishing threats often delivered via uncategorized and risky websites. It eliminates the need for IT security teams to choose between overblocking web access or providing wide access that can put an enterprise at risk. Semantic Web Isolation is available on-premise or as a cloud offering hosted on Semantic's global cloud. Web Isolation does not require any endpoint installations and supports all browsers, devices, and operating systems. It also integrates tightly with Semantic Secure Web Gateways and other Semantic products and leverages the Semantic Global Intelligence Network to identify and assess risky websites. Thank you for watching this demo of Semantic Web Isolation. To learn more, we invite you to visit the Web Isolation product page on the Semantic website and schedule a personalized demo.